Last time, Lost Mine of Fendelver. Our battle-hardened warriors continued their careful exploration of the overgrown Thunder Tree Village, unearthing an eerily uncluttered farmhouse that seemed to have served as temporary lodging for a small group, perhaps gone only a week hence. Their journey led them north, where Mr. B's keen perception spotted a group of kobolds hiding in a ruined cottage. Swift and lethal, he and his allies vanquished the threat before a single alarm could be raised. And in a northeastern corner, they, spied, they skirted a garrison where ashen zombies lurked in the shadows, opting for the strategic vantage of the central hill. There, nestled amidst the ruins, stood a tower, Venom Fang's lair. A quick reconnaissance yielded a plan, and moving stealthily, they infiltrated an adjoining cottage, poised on the edge of danger. Mr. B was first to breach the tower, coming face to face with the majestic, terrifying creature, Venom Fang, the young green dragon. His allies surged forward in response, a maelstrom of spells, steel, and bravery. They had the advantage, but the beast was far from defenseless. Its toxic breath dealt a significant blow, forcing Brecker to drop concentration on his spirit shot. The dragon's prideful taunts soon turned to desperate cries, though, as the tide of battle turned against it. A well-placed strike from Dr. O's dragon shimitar left the creature's neck exposed. Seizing the opportunity, Mr. B cut deep into Venom Fang's vulnerable flesh, triggering a violent death throw that left the beast defeated and lifeless. They had fought a dragon, and against all odds, they had emerged victorious. And thus brings us to the present moment, where you stand within the dragon's lair, a tower that whispers of abandoned hopes, a shadowy sentinel in the heart of the eerie Thunder Tree Village. The scent of crushed foliage and the metallic taint Dragon's blood hangs in the air, mixing with the faint mustiness of old stone treasure undisturbed. Before you sprawls Venom Fang's horde, a modest spectacle of shimmering coins, gleaming jewels, and mysterious objects, each piece reflecting the muted sunlight that filters through the cracked stone walls. It's a wealth that hums with a hidden history, each item a silent testament to a tale untold. The silence of your victory laps at your senses, filling your ears with the soft whisper of wind passing through the skeletal ruins of the village and the occasional chink shifting treasure. The omnipresent eerie ab ambiance of the abandoned village has been temporarily replaced with a triumphant quietude. Exhausted yet elated, your hearts pulsate with the thrill of success. The dangerous task of driving off this young green dragon, Venom Fang, is over. A task that seemed insurmountable, perhaps, when first presented. Now a testament to your strength, tenacity. The road back to Redoth, the promise of a ritual which would aid Melian, waits patiently upon your return. Echo of the normalcy you once knew, now lying beyond the veil of, the, of this momentous triumph. Today, you stand victorious in the echoing silence of this lair. The ruins of Thunder Tree hold its breath, anticipation for next move. As you look among all of your treasures, you see about a hundred platinum pieces, three thousand three hundred gold pieces. 9,000 silver pieces, and 1,200 copper pieces. One rusty battle axe, two magic scrolls, seven gemstones, a rapier, an amulet, and a smooth polished stone. Have all of those in the party sheet. We take some moments to... My life. <laughs> it is a pile. Um, 
Can we just, like, take a moment to try to identify any of the things? Sure. I assume they're probably all identifiable. Um... Which thing would you like to identify? Um... Yes, let's start with the elegant scroll. Okay. Make no an arcana check. I just want to say that was a really freaking great intro. That was it really was. good. <laughs> it was. Wait, wait, that's a dex arcana. That is not that that should be a twenty, unless you want me to roll it again. Alright. You know that you have found a scroll of Misty Step. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Did druids do that? <laughs> you were thinking exactly what I was thinking. I mean, you Let's hit the other scroll, the superior scroll. I would say it'd probably take uh so normally like identifying takes an hour okay um we can bring it all back to the van and do it yeah I just okay figured we're on our last day and i don't know what we're fighting anymore so <laughs> i'd say oh, um oh. for like a scroll you could probably look at it and then just like in 10 minutes probably figure and i think brecker has the identify spell i don't know if he has it up yeah i can uh ritual cast identify every 10 minutes yeah so we can just blow through these yeah which will have components uh, he has to have the the pearl or whatever worth 100 gold pieces it might be a diamond but it doesn't it doesn't get used right it doesn't get used. No. yeah so okay. he can just keep casting all right so um <laughs> All right. There is an amulet of proof against detection and stone of good luck, otherwise known as a luck stone. Plus one rapier. U, which is rusty battle axe with runes in dwarvish on the axe head that. Well, this looks like something you would like, Brecken. You is a plus one battle axe that deals maximum damage when the wielder hits a plant creature or an object made. Whoever carries the axe feels uneasy whenever he or she travels through it. So I have the scroll of lightning. Now we're talking. <laughs> Melly, how do you feel about that that <clears throat> lucky that, that lucky stone? I wasn't going to say wait, I'm still in in, in oh, you're wild shape form, right? You're a raptor. Well it's um, been an hour. Okay. It's been yeah, an yeah, hour, yeah. so you would drop it. Okay, yeah, so I'm back to normal. Um <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I do have a penchant for danger and getting stuck in bad situations. So if you guys don't mind, I, I could really use it. I, I am I am happy for you to take it. Please, please do, have, do us all a favor. You know, th this makes me feel like I, I need to do one of like a, a cleansing ritual or something when I go back home. Like this, this travel has put stuff in perspective. Uh, what is, what does this amulet look like? Is it like um, a necklace or a... like this? Oh, it's a kitty cat. It's an emerald eye. Ooh. While this polished agate is on your person, you gain a plus one bonus to ability checks and saving throws. It does require attunement. 
All right. Um, can I fashion it in like a, into a ring? Um, if you had a. Hey, Doctor O. What about me? What? Artificer. If you have an artificer of sufficient skill, you might be. Oh, I'm. Well, do you think you can? Do you think you can wear this like a like a ring or something? A ring? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, um, I would make some adjustments. I'll have to. I'll have to evaluate it. All right, sounds good. Well, for now, I'm gonna just put it into one of my pockets, so you know I don't walk around without it already. I love this amulet of proof against detection and location, but attunement slots. Eh. <laughs> Does anybody else like really want it? Not want it? Some part of me wants to put it on Mr. Bubbles. <laughs> He's such a notable member of our party. He sure is. <laughs> He's Which definitely part? the part you remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when do we see that again? Yeah. For what? The amulet? How do I check attunement slots? Oh, uh, that is in your inventory. So if you click on the inventory tab, the column next mm -hmm. to the weight, um, there's like a triangle with a A in the middle at the very top, if you hover over it, it says attunement. That's the column that says what stuff is it. Oh, I have, I only have one thing attuned. Yep. I have two attunement slots. I'm also going to put this ring of protection in there because I'm not going to use it so that somebody else can. Um, I don't think I can cast lightning bolt. If anybody else can cast lightning bolt, I suggest I you take the scroll. If not, think... I'll just hold on to it. I don't think either, any of us can cast Lightning Bolt or Misty Step. Which is a shame. Uh, let's see. Lightning Bolt, Druid, Mountain Circle, Eldritch Knight, Sorcerer, Wizard, Arcane. Misty Step. I don't know if that includes the updates. It's Tasha's updated some class list. Misty Step, Druid of the Coast. Eldritch Knight, Sorcerer, Warlock, Wizard, Arcane. So. I can hold on to them. I think there's a point in which artificers can use those things, but it's like super down the road. Once the Amulet of Proof Against Detection. Hmm. I think Melly doesn't want it because then Styx can't talk to her. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll, I'll take either that or the ring of protection if y'all want to get rid of something. <laughs> Mr. Bubbles, how many attunement slots do you have? Because I feel like I've given our backstory, we I've might want to. I would love to put the amulet on Mr. Bubbles just because of our past. That makes sense. I was thinking that actually. Yeah. I can agree with that. What about Hugh the Battle Axe? Plus one I Battle Axe. That's got Brecker's name on it. And yeah. plus one Rapier. I'm worried to give you Paranoia and and Forest. <laughs> I feel like that's going to come very handy if, we, if we're going to chalk. <laughs> or really bad. <laughs> one oh, or. yeah. <laughs> well, those are jungles, not forests, aren't they? Uh, well, technicalities. Hey, it says forests. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't have a need for the rapier. We can just take it and sell it if nobody else cares. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can sell it. <laughs> okay, so. Bubbles. All the coins and everything. Inventory. We're rich. And now we're going to be super over encumbered. <laughs> we can just spend it all on the battle tank. <laughs> Same. Can we put this like do we can do we have like a, a safe in, in the in, in that battle tank, Dr. O? <laughs> 
I mean, there's the safe room. is you have, you have to go through me. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, do we have an area that we can put all this stuff? You have a bedroom. I like. <laughs> we don't Ooh. have a vault, but you have a bedroom. You can put some stuff in there. I don't see any reason why you'd have to hold on to all of it all the time. Yeah, true, true. I'm gonna feel like a dragon myself. I'm gonna sleep like a lizard. <laughs> Just pile it on the on the on the, on the corner of my room <laughs> and sleep on top of it. Melian turns into like a lizard thing and then just sits on her horde. Of- Do you want all these dragon teeth, Melian? Yes. You can make some dragon arrows. Yes, yes, yes. I want. All right. Let I'm me get- make some. Decorations. They're kind of heavy, but here's some. Oh, 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 that should be 10. I pushed the wrong button. It's okay, I can do it. I can still hold a lot. Well, I need to get all of it out of my inventory. Dragon teeth. There you go. Um, did you want thank these you, gills, you. Brecker, so you can make armor? Uh, yes. I'd very much like that. Alright, there's some scales. We have flesh if we wanted to cook things. Blood. Seems kind of yucky. Don't know what it can do. I feel like a spine can do something cool, I just don't know what it is. Oh, it's for making wands and staves. Okay, that's what I got right now. Melly, you took one of the dragon teeth, not all of them. I'm going to put all of them, but like I grab the thing, it just goes one at a time. Ten, right? Yep. All right. I want. I want to have. Carry anything else. I, I. I definitely. I've been looking. I've, I've been looking at like ideas for like the the, the dragon bone instruments because I'm really interested in having one of those. I think I want a flute. I need somebody to make me a, a dragon bone flute. How would that? If if something like that doesn't already like a set amount of stats exist for it, can I still have one? Would you would you like? Yeah, yeah, I'll figure it out. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, I definitely want one of those. I'm just gonna split these dragon bones between you and me. Here, there you go. There's three in the in the sheet. Thank you. Hey. After about an hour of uh, gathering your things, talking amongst yourselves in Dragon Tower, what like to do? Um, do we still have? Uh, I believe we've we fought some kobolds, but I, I think there, we still had an issue with the um, still with the uh, undead and more kobolds around dead and stuff if we wanted to risk attacking them um otherwise we've we've succeeded in what the druid master asked us which was to run off the dragon <laughs> um so we could just talk to him all right yeah we could rid this whole place of their zombie infestation all right sounds like a good plan i think either way we should um, go ahead and, and talk to him again. All right. Well, let's take off then. Sounds good to me. Okay. Like all of you are. <laughs> I don't think I am now that I gave them all the encumbrance. Uh- that's oh, all right. I am. Yeah, I am that, that's all right. That's all right. Don't. Okay, so you want to go back to Redoth? Uh, yes. Okay. 
Well, if we don't have to worry about encumbrance, then let me just get rid of my boots. No. Just just <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there's 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 not like a need to worry about it right now. We're just gonna draw. We're gonna just drag our way back, and when we get to the uh, to our, our wagon again, we just drop all the stuff there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I really want to get a vat made, so I have a good place to sleep. A what right. made? A vat. Like a big, a big, big bottle. Million. Just turns into like this jelly <laughs> when she's. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really sick of absorbing all the dirt and leaves and stuff. It would be nice to have nice, clean, sterile environment to rest. Bad inside your tent. <laughs> I wonder if we can make like a uh, get a the the trunk of a tree and just make a hollow like area for you inside. Melly, Melly, do you, do you see that in that house? That's, Where what? What house? But there's there's something really big over there. I don't see anything. Let me move a little bit. Oh, we're actually like moving. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> oh, oh, Mister Beat. Oh, right. Um, yeah, that probably. That doesn't look good. Uh, that looks really gross, actually. Seems a little bit big. Um, Weathered just... signboard by the door of a large building northwest shows the faded image of a workhorse holding a flagon of ale. The building itself is sagging and dilapidated. But it is more intact than the ruins across. Then, see the hulking form, ogre, decaying flesh, standing motionless, looking. I don't think we should leave this thing roaming around, but I also don't want a repeat of what happened last time. Oh, hell. Hey, <laughs> we need an amulet of silencing. <laughs> All right, that's better. Thank you. Now, what do you say? I mean, should we just get rid of it? I mean, I think we should. If we, if we were to save this area, can we just get rid of it through the window? Just note. If we want to get rid of these, we better might as well get rid of the ashen ones we saw earlier too. It's just, this one's really big. Um, See the guts falling out of its stomach. Oh, I, yeah. hate, oh, I hate the undead. Oh. I think I think we should use our advantage, being outside here and attack from the from where we can see him. I really don't want to get close to that thing. Hide behind this tree. <laughs> I'm gonna follow Dr. O. So, until I can have a little bit of a visual, yeah. Scrubbles, go snap it through the window. Okay. I don't think she moved going straight up in there. <laughs> Can I stab it? Um, okay. <laughs> Two things. <laughs> I 
<laughs> laugh though. We always manage to like land on something. All right. So, as you are moving through this area, Doctor O and Melian both catch sight. The ogre within building to the north. Everyone is creeping around. Mr. B just starts trudging right through the underbrush. Going he said to go do it. In front of the window and is going to stab at the ogre. Mr. B, go ahead go and it. make your attack. I need everyone full initiative. Oh. Can't a damn brain. Very savvy. I'm, enc I'm getting there. I'm encumbered. Uh. So I crit. Why did you have advantage? I have no idea. Probably if it wasn't aware. I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you have the advantage button pushed? Wait a second. One of those apparently Venom Fang is still targeted. Oh. <laughs> oh, so you hit Venom Fang. <laughs> but both but of those were 20. 20 on the other one. Yeah, you got a 20 on both of them, I think. So yep. I think the advantage was because Venom Fang was prone. Yep. <laughs> All right, so that is a critical hit. Yay. I uh, need you to roll initiative as well. Okay, I'll do that before I roll damage. Oof. Now should I roll damage? Go ahead. Why is this hidden? Oh, it didn't roll damage, did it? Don't I think, think I so. I think I clipped the weapon's header instead of the damage. Oh, yeah. There we go. 21 points of slashing damage as Mr. B strides up casually and just shoot, stabs his greatsword arm into the hulking creature. You feel the sword dig deep into the flesh. As it slowly turns around to look at you, you see the face of an ogre with its bottom jaw missing. Your sword giving a sickening squelch as it turns, freeing itself from the blade. I would have been really worried if it wasn't the face of an ogre. <laughs> and that takes us to Vivacity. Wow, you guys really rolled sucky on initiative. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, Viv, what do you got? You there, Viv? Oh, I can see you're talking, but I don't hear anything. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I had it oh. muted, sorry. Um, I can't really see it yet. I, I'm assuming it's over near Mr. Bubble, so I'm going to go get yep. a little closer. That's all difficult terrain in there. Okay. I have 30. I want to try to get within view. Okay, now I can see it. Now I can yep. see it. All right. Um. It would have superior cover. Mm hmm so any dexterity saving throw or attack no the other saving throw would be um i'm gonna cast uh dissonant whispers at okay. uh can i upcast that yes i can um i'm gonna cast that at level two Up, 
Did it do it? Um. Oh, you hit the uh, you hit the star button. You gotta do the uh, over to the right the button. Star button on the far left doesn't do anything. Oh. It just it just creates a chat message. Oh. Um, I'm not pressing the start button. I'm actually I'm pressing the cast button. Okay, so you're doing it on the ogre zombie, right? Wait, did it work now? Okay. There we yeah. go. Okay. Bassity, you whisper out discordant whispers traveling along the sound waves, which crash into the ogre zombie unfazed. It succeeds on its saving. Of course it does. All right. Um. I'm going to give a bardic inspiration to uh, Melian. Okay. Remember, dissonant whispers. Usually leveled spells still deal damage on a on a miss. It's just half. Okay. So target the ogre again. Go ahead, hit that damage button. And it should automatically go. Um, it should you cast it? You upcasted it, so that would be an extra die. Remember how to get the extra die on there? Drag and drop the blood icon, and while you're dragging it, you hit the right mouse button to add a die, and then you want to drag that on the... There you go. All right. The ogre takes six points of psychic damage. Melian is given a bardic inspiration. Woohoo! <laughs> Viv, still very tired from the from the dragon fight of her doing absolutely nothing, is completely exhausted, but too, entirely too exhausted for another round of doing absolutely nothing. And so when she gives her inspiration, it's kind of just like a, go do the thing. <laughs> All right, Brecker, you receive initiative. What are you doing? All right, so quick, 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 two questions. Uh, first off, what are the movement penalties for being over encumbered? Um, your speed is five, I think. Oof. But I don't worry about it. I'm not counting you guys as encumbered. All right. He did literally say, "Don't worry about it." So. So yeah. Okay, I didn't hear that part. My bad. Fifteen feet. All right. Clear sight. Okay, second question. I, just because I play in multiple different editions, uh, told uh, the chronic damage doesn't heal zombies, right? Um, fifth edition. That's yeah. That's not a. Th okay, just make sure. Yep. Because I want to cast Toll the Dead on Mister Ogre Zombie here. Right. So that's gonna be my uh, what I'm gonna do. Get the save. The ogre succeeds once again. Ogres still have wisdom. What? Zombies, at least. Okay. Oh man. Alrighty. Does anybody need any healing? How other than myself. Need a wisdom save. I know, right? Uh. Oh, that's, that sounded nasty. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and uh, bonus action healing word, Mr. Bubbles. It looks like he did. He still has some damage on him. I think we're going to do that. That'll be the end of my turn. Right there. Let me... Where's my healing word? There it is. There you go. All right. Mr. B is healed six points of health. That will take us to the Ogre Zombie's turn, who is going to reach through the doorway with a Morning Star attempting to smack Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles is going to have a little bit of cover on this. Awkward swing. A 22. Damn. That hit. You know it does. 
Yeah, but if I say, if I ask, then that gives you guys time to do any of your reactions. <laughs> yes, it hits. Okay. <laughs> Plus, it feels good when you say yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> 15 points of bludgeoning damage as the morning star cracks in into Mr. B. And that takes us... To another zombie. Next time I'm just gonna lie about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized if I took the attack action to hit the, the ogre the first time, I probably should have had my extra attack right away, right? Oh well. Uh, I don't know it's if I right count that for starting in it. Yeah, but it's whenever you take the attack action. But yeah, that's true. It's whatever. It's long, it's after now. It's. All right, the zombie is going to move over and is going to attempt to attack Mr. B as well. A slam attack as some fists come swinging out. There's a 15 hit. What if I said yes? No, it doesn't. <laughs> then I would have some questions. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right. I just wanted you to feel good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And you hear some groaning the other end of the building. Other zombies to beat. Using that takes doors. us to Mr. Bubbles. Alright, swinging at the ogre g guy. Wow. A 12 hits. Double wow. Seven points of slashing damage as you cut into the ogre zombie once again. And again. A 21 hits. 12 points of slashing damage cutting into the decaying flesh of this large creature. And he's still up. Alright, that upsets me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have any more rages though, so... Oh well. Um, but, can he make... Or I think I can do this. Like, if I do Thunderous Blows, it's when I hit him with an melee attack. So I think I can drop that onto him. Once per turn while raging. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, I suck. <laughs> All right. Never mind. I'm done. Okay. That takes us to Melian's turn. What are you doing? I'm going to approach a little bit closer so I can have uh, get them in the line of sight. Um, do... <sighs> Mm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to try to hit them with a ice knife. Okay. Uh, the the big ogre. Okay. That would get Mr. Bubbles in the blast. Oh. I don't know. Hmm. We'd have to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, Mr. Bubbles is going to be fine. Look at him. He's good. Um, I can hear him if anything happens. Uh, all right. Not this turn. You shoot an icicle and hit on a 20 damage. Alrighty. Six points of piercing magical damage pierces the flesh of the ogre, and it bursts. Go ahead and roll the saving throw, because I have them all. Alrighty. Mr. B succeeds, and both of the zombies fail. Roll damage. Best option. Oh, shit! Twelve points of cold damage. Look at 
charm is already working! Yes! Okay, I'm going to... Sir Fluffy. Right. Uh, do not go in there, but... Uh, I don't think he, I don't want him to go in there, but... Sir Fluffy, try to get those things, please. And that's my... Action. That's my turn. Okay. As the icicle bursts and the ashen zombie is damaged, Mr. Bubbles, I need you to make me a constitution saving. Oh, shit. <laughs> a great <laughs> cloud of ash bursts. But Mr. Bubbles doesn't need to breathe, and he doesn't breathe any of this in. He is fine. This takes us to Sir Fluffy. I'm actually... I, what's his name? I'm gonna come bounding. Let's see. 5, 10, 15... Then it is going to take the dodge act. After receiving... After getting one point of throw. Alright. Dr. Oafbay, you are up. Oafbay really doesn't like these things at all. Um, she'll, she'll come up here to Mr. Bubbles. She'll be like... Nah, I don't like these zombies. I can't un I can't unclick the one I can't see. I'm trying to unclick it. Got it. Alright, and then I wanna target Mr. Bubbles and cast Cure Wounds. Boop. Wow. Five points of healing to Mr. Bubbles. Alright. And then I am going to hit my spell slot, and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna back right back up. Okay, like so this. uh, you use 25 feet to get two there because of the. Oh, it's difficult terrain. Yep. My bad. Yeah, the brush realize. is difficult. Okay, so I guess I can't really go anywhere. Can I step here? Yes. Okay. Then that would be the end of my turn. All right, more undead flailing inside the building. You see, down to your southwest, suddenly a bunch of kobolds jumping up, scurrying around. Those who speak draconic hear, They killed the master! RUN FOR YOUR LIVES! Oh, we are, we're scary. A bunch of them are just gonna take dash act. <laughs> Trying to do the GTFO maneuver. <laughs> God, get out. <laughs> That takes us to Vivacity. What do you do? All right, so I'm going to... Ooh, Move a little bit. So I want to move 10 feet here. And uh, do I have a I have a do I have a better uh, view on the ogre now? Yes. All right. Um, so I'm going to I'm 
I'm going to cast. I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try Dissonant Whispers again at level two. Okay. Your discordant tone floats on the airwaves once again. This time, the ogre cannot shake it. It fails. Yeah, there we go. Fifteen points of psychic damage. The ogre is still standing. All right, and then I'm going to uh, give my. Let me I'm going to give my my good party a mantle of inspiration. Ooh. All right. Just gave the temporary to the. Oh, what? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit, I forgot I still had him targeted. Damn it. Um, if you look at, at the top right of the map, you should see a little flag icon. That's how you can target all friendly friendly units. Oh. Otherwise, individually, you can click. Got it for you. All right. That would be an interesting something. Trying to inspire an undead. Let's do that again. There you go. Eight temporary hit points to everyone. All right. Enjoy that, y'all. Could I... Uh, real, could I attempt real quick to uh, discern how many zombies are in that house? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make me a perception check. All right. Um, three. Three. Well, including th the uh, one of the ogres and then three zombies. Mm. One ogre zombie, three. All right. Sorry. I've just to make sure we're clear, our objective here is to get kill this ogre and then get out, right? I can kill them all, but the ogre's the one I care about. Very well. Then I am going to waltz right up to the front door. <coughs> uh, actually, shoot, I, I, it's because it feels like it's been a while. Would I require? Would it be a free action or we have, what item interaction to open the door? Okay. Then I'll use my item interaction, open up the store, and with my regular action, give out a loud shout as I attempt to turn undead. Ooh! I'll go target everybody, include. Including the one I can't see now out in this corner. I can see or hear you. Yeah. So I just kick over the door, door, let out a giant battle cry, and my magic just starts swirling around all the undead creatures. Let's see how many of them fail. I hope all of them. They all fail. Are any of them half C CR below? Yes. They are automatically destroyed. Holy shit. <laughs> all right. You all hear this great <laughs> and great clouds of ash as Brecker strides up confidently, displaying out his holy symbol, uttering a prayer to Gond as three of the undead within turn to ash and disappear. Holy shit, Damn, Brecker. Way to go. And then he, and that's going to end my turn, and I'm going to end my turn by looking at Mr. Bubbles and say, the big one's all yours. <laughs> all right, the ogre mm -hmm. zombie 
is going to smash its morning star at Mr. Bubbles once again. Awkwardly in the window. This is done with cover. A 13. Does that hit? No. Where's, where'd my uh, turn on dead go? Did you do it get disappear? I uh, clicked the button. I uh, think uh, I think when an, I turn if a turn on dead all who failed even if they aren't destroyed all have to flee. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's turn for one minute. Can turn. I, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, if he runs away, I am one hundred percent gonna take the opportunity attack. That's fine by me. All right, Turn go for it. Back to throw. <laughs> Jeez. Eleven hits. Oh my gosh. With eleven points of damage, the ogre zombie quickly tucks tail and turns to flee. Mr. Bubbles takes the opportunity to swing his sword and cuts the ogre down. Good. <laughs> Are they all gone, Mr. Bubbles? You think so? Okay. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> he fails to make his undead fortitude saving throw. Nice. Down, go. Kobolds are gonna do their thing. Are you guys gonna attack the kobolds? That's a random one. Nah. nah, they're running away. Okay. Things eat. I mean, yep. no mercy, but that just seems like trouble. Mm. If they flee, there's no point in chasing them down. It's like chasing down an ant. Which is why. And Brecker starts to waltz into the into the house, checking for any signs of further undead that might have survived. You do not see. But is there anything of else of, of interest in this house? Though? See, the eastern half of the building must be an old common room, while the western portion of the kitchens and the brewery vats. Huge wooden tunes stand to the west and a faint smell of yeast still permeates the air. The ale, however, is long gone. I can feel it in my skin. Ugh. Hmm. Ugh. Can I harvest them? The vats? Um, no. Wait, there's vats in here? Um, but no, um, the... The ogres and things, or oh, they just gotcha. like, smash now? Okay. Do that in Discord. Okay. Note. Works for me. Now it would. Hmm. Nothing left in here. Shall we head back? Just for me, I don't yes. like sink with this too long. I don't like this ash. Dr. Mm. Off-Base Ooze will kind of like just wiggle uncomfortably <laughs> as she exits the house. I do not have fond memories of this either. Let's go. Are these runs very pretty? Walking by? These ruined side-by-side -side cottages look as though they might have been the homes of prosperous shopkeepers or well-off farmers in their all that remains now are collapsed walls and piles of debris. Several young trees have grown up in the midst of the I mean, if they're wealthy, there very well could be something in these... these broken 
runs. If anybody wants to take a look. Yep. Um, I would like to to look for some, for anything that we could find interesting, yeah, shiny. Yeah, look around too. Yeah, me too. Right. Anyone that wants to search, please make me a wisdom perception check. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> Almost all at once. But Brecker getting there first. Find an old chest amongst the roots of one of the trees growing up through a house. Open it. Hmm. Yes. Okay. I do. Within taking a little bit to creak open the rusted hinges and the dirt clotting it you find 700 copper pieces 160 silver pieces and 90 gold pieces this must have been the chest of some well off merchant in this day have those in the hmm Hey, money. Oh, we did it. Good job, everyone. Good to die, Brecker. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it was just standing in the middle, <laughs> just sitting there. <laughs> we had to find, we had to celebrate small victories. Yeah, yeah. don't kill her, Joy. But it's like, congratulations on seeing the chair in the middle of the room. <laughs> Just let her be happy. <laughs> Alright, Dr. Like Ombe will the fluffy. Wait because she knows she's not the best introduction to people. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Sir Fluffy to wait outside because I don't feel like pushing him back in. <laughs> he sits on his haunches with a his like head peeking in through the window. He's so cute, I love him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh Sir Sir Rizus, um we we were successful in our in our endeavor. We were able to kill the dragon. You see Redoth, the old druid, hard at work getting some stuff together, crushing leaves, other such concoctions, turns around to face you, almost looking uh, confused, but then the memory comes back. Recognition. Oh, oh. so soon. Uh, you, you, Venom Fang. He's gone. You don't have to worry about him anymore. Uh, gone? Yes, we were able to defeat him. He's deceased. A look of disappointment, perhaps, goes on his face. His shoulders <sighs> sag a little bit. As his face becomes a little downcast. Hmm, <sighs> could not be helped. For the best. As he shakes his head up and down a little bit. And after a little bit of him just kind of like shaking his head up and down, every all of you are like looking to each other like, uh, what's going on? This is kind of awkward. Suddenly he uh, he looks up again. Hmm. Kobolds? And he squints his eyes. They left running after we defeated, yeah, after we defeated Venom Fang. They did not wish to put up a fight and we did not chase after them. I do not think they will risk coming back here. A big sigh of relief washes over his body. And he steps towards you, Melian, at this... Oh, good, good. 
puts a hand reassuringly on your shoulder, Melian. Very good. Um, healing. Evil. Um, must help when able. Yes, yes, must help when able. And he turns around to go back to his concoctions. Looking to finish preparing his ritual. And this is where we will take our first break. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we are back. Oh, you have defeated Venom Fang. You have driven off all of the kobolds that you know about. You have taken care of all the zombies you have seen. Now you are speaking with Redoth, who appears pleased with your actions here in Thundertree. Making good on your promise, promise to drive out these creatures as well as take care of Venom Fang. And in exchange, he would perform a ritual. Give insight into some of the things that Melian is dealing with, as well as perhaps the rest of the party and maybe even the rest of Sword Coast. So, as we rejoin back in, what are we doing? Brecker was Brecker's going to see if uh, Radoff needs any help with his ritual, being a bit of being a uh, being something of a uh, ritual guy himself. So I'm proficient in rituals. Um, hmm. make me a proficient religion or arcana check. I couldn't have been something else. I don't have any of that. <laughs> oh no. You're not religious or magical. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I I I meant to take. I didn't take religion because I didn't think I need it. But you're clear. <laughs> I shut up. This ain't one of them campaigns. This, this is a. These are choices made. How how many months ago? <laughs> Fourteen something. Oh my god, has it really been that long? Jeez. Yeah. It's been over a year, yeah. Uh, I think Mel is also going to try to help. Um, in part because she is invested in that, and also in part because she wants to learn from another druid with so much experience. Well, before you do that, are you proficient in Arcana or <laughs> Religion? Arcana! Right, hey, go ahead you roll go. Arcana. I can do both. Okay, mistake. Yeah, Vim can literally do all of it. Okay, mistake. Can I do a roll too? Yeah. yeah. Just what we're doing. What are we trying to do? Helping <laughs> him with the ritual. Oh, I would love to. Uh, help. Arcana and what else was it? Religion. religion. Okay. Proficient Arcana or religion? Uh, if Doctor Offbe starts helping, Mister Bubbles will also start hel okay. helping in quotes. <laughs> You All stay right. right there and you just watch out for me, Mr. Bubbles. <laughs> now, like, I'll, right. I'll just pick something up and like wave it around. Not necessarily in the ritual, but like outside of it. Side. Just, like I'm helping, yeah. <laughs> like I'll, when I'll you give you. a little kid a, like a toy so they feel like they're participating. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, that's like, exactly what Redoth does. Mr. <laughs> yes. B goes to pick up like um, something that's obviously really important. Redoth just like puts his hand on Mr. B's, grabs something else like a twig, and then he holds it out. Uh, a wave twig, twig. in air outside. Oh, outside. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what is that image? How do I find that image adorable? <laughs> giant robot. It is cute though. <laughs> All right. You got it, Mr. Bubbles. <laughs> Melian, Dr. O, and Vivacity. You all see a couple different items. There is incense burning. And there is also a bunch of leaves it's this like weird basket thing woven together of like leaves reeds and really good flower petals it's like woven in a sort of like cornucopia it's actually quite beautiful when you look at it 
And there's apples and, and corn husks and different stuff inside as well. Redoth grabs it along with the incense and looks at you, Melian. Ready? As ready as I would ever be. Hmm. Spread, spread. Circle, circle. I'm gonna move a little bit so I can form a circle with with him and everyone else participating. Do that. Go. He places the cornucopia in the center of the floor. Sets it aflame. Sits upon the ground. Holding his hands above it. Rocking gently back and forth. His eyes closed. Repeating phrases in After a little bit of time. Seems like everything kind of washes away. All of your senses are muted. And you feel really out of place. You're still in Thunder's Tree, you're still in this shack, but it, it seems kind of surreal, almost far away in a way. And you feel very much your own consciousness. You look around and like there's birds chirping and there's still the wildlife but it's like very light echoes and all of a sudden voice you who have called upon ask your question you are awashed in this feeling of divine grace. This is when Redoth stops rocking back and forth. Looks at you, Melian. Smiles. Malian looks at him, or is the, does the does the voice come from him or from all around? No, you're you're healing. You're hearing it kind of like all around you. Mm -hmm. He holds up a single finger and says, mm, "One ask, one." Okay. A danger spreads through the land. Like it corrupts like a like a big tree, killing it from the inside, reaching the branches, making the leaves fall. A disease spreads among the people. Those who died and came back. Please tell me what is causing it. takes a little bit you hang on the air tension building waiting for sir finally voice responds S 
soul monger. And at Money this, everything fades back. I need Dr. Ofbe. I can't figure out how to whisper you. <laughs> oh. Um, if you want to whisper me quick, uh, backwards slash W space GM and whisper. Meanwhile, Mel is looking confused, just trying to think about it. I need Dr. O. Thumb saving. Okay. Yes, I'm saving through. Can I use inspiration? have an inspiration to use. That's way better. All right. <clears throat> As the ritual fades away and the soft, powerful voice disappears, Dr. O, feel that Evasive presence attempt to grab hold of something. But not just something. Very eerily slimy even. Quite an unnerving feeling. You feel it attempt to latch onto you specifically. As the ritual fades away, almost just in time. It too appear that, that was that was unexpected I think we got more than we asked for with that what do you mean do you know anything about this whatever this is what whatever we just did Oh, something came along with it. There was another. There was something else here. Couldn't you feel it? It. It wasn't just with the druid here. It was another presence. I think it tried. I think it tried to attach me. Is, is everyone else okay? And she'll kind of look yes. around at everyone else. Yes, I, I I didn't feel anything odd um, besides just feeling a little bit everywhere at once and out of it too and, and hearing that voice, but nothing that felt like wanted to latch to me. Are you okay? Yeah, I think on? so. Yeah, I, I I I think I pushed it back. I I I don't know. I there was just something else here while you were talking. At mention of this, Redoth kind of, not panicking, but hurriedly kind of moves over to you, listening to you speak. He also sees your uh, form. It's kind of like looking at you, holding his hands, closing his eyes as he like wipes them in the air before you. Slowly, his eyes blink open, almost like from a sleep. He has a very curious expression on his face, as well as he looks at Mr. B. He takes a step back. Not natural. Alien. 
not of this plane. That that sounds right. That's correct. And she'll kind of nod her oozy little head. <laughs> Is she okay with us? The, the the presence though, the presence also felt did I mean, do I have that right that it felt alien? Yes. Potentially not of this world alien or alien to the the conversation we were having. <laughs> alien to the conversation you were having. Okay. I thought he was talking about us. Do you know what it do you know what it is? What what was there with us? Does Dr. Offbay have any potential knowledge of what that might have been? Make me a tele check. Just straight intelligence? Yep, straight. So, <clears throat> you know, you know, you're from Ravnica. Yeah. Well, probably. I, 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 I think I'm pretty yeah. sure it's come up before. With the doggo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, well, she doesn't remember all yeah. of that. So we know, but we don't really remember. You know that you are from a different plane, instance, a different. <laughs> Not even just a different plane, a different universe entirely. Name of Ravnica. Remember, it's quite different. Wilds are uh, quite untame, and even the cities piled heaps upon heaps above each other, built upon remnants, whatever city came. You remember reading in your diary entries about the Institute of the Track Institute of the Track after meeting Carferon, specifically looking for entries about trackers. Some of the abilities employed by these trackers to find find things, find whatever, patience. You have a suspicion always present in the back of your mind. This paranoia that the trackers are after you. Even though you can't really place it in your mind that it's a thing, this paranoia, this, say, anxiety, now kind of and given a little bit of form. Perhaps it was something of a tracker. No, that's not good. Um, well, what I think it is, everyone, is you remember that there are people after Mr. Bubbles and myself I, I think they may have been trying, trying to locate us. I, I think that might have been what I just felt. It, it's it's hard to tell. I'm always thinking that's what something could be, but I just can't shake that feeling. You know, I I think we need to go, and I think we need to go soon. I don't think we want to stay in one place much longer. Me and Arcana check intelligence. Yes, Arcana. And. With a 20 Arcana, you know that your exact position certainly not found. suspect at least current plane of existence and maybe a rough area okay that's more than I want but yes (laughs) 
Okay, so it doesn't really matter where we're at on this plane. We're probably pretty... Okay. Okay, maybe we don't need to leave this minute. I just... I guess something for me to keep in mind. Maybe I should take that ring, Mr. Bubbles. I, I don't know. Maybe we need one for both of us. We can go back. Uh, we can, of course, finish up everything here. We have a name. Do we know what it means? Soulmonger? Would any of us know that name? Um, I'll trade you the ring for the gauntlet. Let's see, go ahead. Uh, anyone trained in Arcana? A really good. high DC. Let me try. Mm. That it? I think so. I could intimidate the Arcana to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could do that too. Right. None of you know what the soul monk. Ooh. Maybe we can find information in Neverwinter. Alright, then I guess we, we're going to Neverwinter as soon as possible. Maybe my master will know something about it. Oh yeah, Styx would be a very good, very wise choice. Hmm. Um, Rita, do you know anything about it? He just shakes his head. Well, at least, at least we have something to go forward with. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate your help and uh, your assistance. I hope that we were able to help clear this area a little bit for you and that this, this region finds its ecological peace again. He smiles very warmly to you, Melian. <laughs> and kind of shakes his hands in front of him. Oh, um, thanks to you. <laughs> All of you. Perhaps one day this could be a thriving village again. I hope. Must be cleansed. And he kind of like stretches himself out like he's got a lot of work to do, you know? Thank you, sir. Perhaps we can come back here in the future and see how I can help. But for now, we must get, we must keep going. Mm, yes, yes. Oh, um, one, one moment. He holds up like a, another finger. Melian. You, good and pure, perfectly harmonious, I have watched. If you are interested, there is a place in the Emerald Enclave for. Does that word seem familiar to me? Right. So you being in Chult would know of this. It is a common faction. Though perhaps not quite as as big farther away from Faerun. <clears throat> the Emerald Enclave is a far-ranging group that opposes threats to the natural world and helps others survive in the Branches of the organization are scattered throughout Faerun and often operate in isolation from the 
This existence teaches the Enclave's members a fierce self-reliance and mastery of certain fighting and survival skills. The ranger of the Enclave might be hired to, to lead a caravan through a treacherous mountain pass or the frozen tundra of Icewind Dale. A druid might volunteer to help a village prepare for a long, brutal winter. Barbarians and druids who live as hermits might appear from nowhere to help defend a town against marauding orcs. Members of the Emerald Enclave know how to survive, and more importantly, to help others do the same. They are not opposed to civilization or progress, but they strive to keep it in balance with the wild. They restore and preserve the natural order, even as they root out and destroy all that is unnatural. They keep the elemental forces of the world in check and keep civilization and the wilderness from destroying. He holds a hand to you again. This great evil spreads. I think you have a place very close to its center. Melian's eyes are going to just widen and she is going to reach out her hand to uh, read us and just grasp it not too tight because she feels like he's she feels his strength but also his fragility and She's just going to look at him with wide eyes and, and I would be honored, sir. <clears throat> good, good. I... Maybe that's, maybe that's a place for me. Yes. Not all battles require a defeat. There's more to th all things than just fighting. Alien's gonna nod and think about the moments they had in which they were fighting and kind of understanding that some of the some of the battles were most of them were out of necessity but I also take that as as a sort of criticism to herself to think more in the future um of what approach is the best and if there is always a, a second option and she's going to nod again and say, I think I think I understand what you mean. I still, I still have much to learn. I hope to, to learn from you again in the future. He smiles warmly again. Yes. Would be good to see you again. All in time. All in time starts kind of old guy walking away not old guy swagger all right melian congratulations you are now in the emerald enclave that was just oh yeah piece. go melly was, yeah. was just like sparkling out of with with like wonder oh my god this is adorable <laughs> Now we're all in factions, except Mr. Bubbles. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't decided what faction I want yet. No well, again, could, Mr. Fancy with choices over here. <laughs> I can't join any factions, because no one would be able to understand me. <laughs> you're, you're in the faction with me, Mr. Bubbles. We're both they, they, would, they would ask me, and I'd just be like, Oh, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm, I'm be, pretty... And they'd be, and they'd be like, yeah, that's right. I'm pretty sure you're considered the property of Dr. O in that faction. <laughs> so you're automatically oh, in. <laughs> Damn. I, I mean, I think we already homebrewed that I am, so that's fine. <laughs> 
Uh, All right. Mel, Mel is gonna go to to, to uh, Sir Fluffy from, from the window, and uh, just like Sir Fluffy, I know I accepted it, and I don't even know if I can invite anyone. But since you're my buddy, are you? Are you? Would you like to join me? He gives a hoot trumpet. <laughs> like yes and there's like a a moment of like oh this is so exciting but also like scary and she just she's just giddy but also anxious just like all over the place i think it's like they've seen mel like react like like with so much outburst of emotion only like a few times like this And then she, after a moment, she comes down and she remembers that there's still so much to do and there's still so much things to face forward that she comes down and regroup herself. All right, to never winter. To never winter. Never winter. All right. Excellent. To get droop. And so we close this chapter in our tale. And you guys get to go to level six. Oh, shit. Yep. We're going to be starting Tomb of Annihilation at level six. So go ahead and get that stuff set up. Um, We can take some time now because we do have time. Um, But this has been Lost Mine of Fendelver. Great job, guys. Definitely a very very good story an amazing group we have here i had a lot of fun perfect perfect thank you for that um and then i will definitely need some time to polish things up and get everything ready get everything to a point where i like it before we really start the campaign but yes we are looking for tomb of annihilation so i will be letting you know exactly when that will be starting when i when i have a good date but i'm thinking at least a month I was so excited. Yes. Too. We're going to Brazil. I mean, Chult. <laughs> <laughs> D&D Brazil. Yes. As long as you don't arrive sick. Yeah. Oh, God. But it is that time. So we must begin signing off. Thank you so much, Potato Monkey, for the follow. We have finished The Lost Mine of Fendeller, but don't forget I run some other campaigns, so if you tune in every other Wednesday, we are playing this coming Wednesday in a Descent into Avernus campaign. I am um, collaborating with other DMs on this because we're doing things a little bit different, reimagining it, remixing. I have my own original introduction, which they... uh, The current party is about halfway through, so exciting stuff there as we... uh, yeah, you just got here. Sorry, man. Ending the stream. <laughs> um, yeah, that double sucks because I just completed the last mine of Fendelver. Um, I'm going to be joining this group once again um, in maybe a month's time where we're actually going to be starting Tomb of Annihilation. So if you're into it, you know, keep that on your ca- on your calendars. I should be updating that. Um, but yeah, so Descent into Avernus this Wednesday if you're available at 9 p.m. Central. Uh, playing like every other Wednesday, so we'll be playing this Wednesday, maybe might play the following, um, but other than that, every other Wednesday, my work schedule is like that. It sucks, but it is what it is. Um, Make sure to follow my Twitter. Um, I got YouTube stuff. I got uh, Facebook. I don't really use the Facebook, but you know, I got it. And then, of course, Twitch. Um, Make sure to follow all those, engage with those, uh, reply to some of the tweets or whatever. Let's talk. Uh, Join the Discord. Discord is probably the place where you can find so uh, make sure to follow that. Um, but there you have it. And as our adventurers are leaving the bar after a long night's tale, go ahead and line up for a final call. Go ahead and tip your mugs back. Thank you so much for being here with us. This has been the Tavern.